The subjects in this video include mental illness and taking one's own life. If you are not in the right headspace to hear about these topics, please exit now and I wish you well. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lady Candic and today we're doing a video that I have put off for a little while, but here we are. Most of us are familiar with the X Factor, especially if you're one of my subscribers and if you're not like a what are you doing? Just hit the button. <laughs> anyway, The X Factor was a British reality TV music competition that ran for 15 seasons between the years of 2004 and 2018. And three seasons here in the US a decade ago. The series was so entertaining, especially the auditions, because it was set up in a way to bring out the biggest reactions from contestants and then edited to be even worse. And we ate it up. Take Debbie Stevens, for example, someone who said they were the best, sang decently, but not to the level that we were expecting because it was so hyped up first, and then couldn't handle the rejection and lashed out. That's how it was portrayed. But when you know the real story, when you know that she went in there saying that she was the best because she was coached to do so, Debbie wouldn't have said that. She would have said, I'm an all right singer. I'm an all right singer. But you don't hear anyone say that. They all say they're spectacular because that's what they're told to do. They have to go in there with the utmost confidence. That's what the judges like. That's what they're expecting. So when we're watching, we're like, oh, she better be good. They're kind of set up to look even worse because of that aspect of the manipulation. And then we're made to think that she wanted to throw water on Louie because she just couldn't handle their feedback. And to me, that was fine, like whatever. But many other people were genuinely angry and it created a lot of abuse and harassment towards her that has persisted since. Her entire life was affected negatively and then we learn now that the real reason she was so upset was because of a remark that Louis made about her mother, a remark that would have made any of us react similarly. Knowing this would have shed Debbie in a better light, but she couldn't speak out to defend herself because she had signed NDAs, which we're hoping are expired now. I'm telling you this because Debbie was collateral damage to the show's success, along with many other people. And someone whose audition closely mirrored hers in terms of being portrayed as angry, unpleasant people was Ariel Burdett. Someone who also went viral and faced constant verbal abuse and criticism and until she ultimately took her own life. Ariel was actually born Amy Burdett, and Amy is the name that she preferred at the time of her death, so knowing that, I'm gonna refer to her as Amy for the rest of this video. Amy auditioned for The X Factor UK in 2008 at the age of 26. Her appearance quickly became one of the most known and talked about auditions of the entire series. Unfortunately for her, because of her constructed song choice, You wanna hear some metal? unfavorable hair and overall confrontational demeanor, the things that people were saying were mean and hateful. To be fair, when you watch the audition and accept it at face value, which is what most of us did at that time, it's easy to not like her. She doesn't fit the cookie cutter, happy-go-lucky, pop idol mold that we as a society pedestaled at that time. She was quickly labeled as a mean and bitter woman and her efforts to correct that public image were futile against the mass audience of people that had already formed their opinions. She was out there saying, Hey guys, that's not me. I'm not really that awful, I promise. She said this in posts and comments. She even popped up on a few blogs and forums. She did a BBC interview. It didn't matter. The general public perception did not change. She so desperately wanted to separate herself from that X Factor audition because she was actually a decent musician and it tainted her. She even took that awful hair and burned it so that the character of Ariel could never come back. And I say character because according to Amy, Ariel was a character. And she explains it best, so I'll read this in her own words. Ariel was a wind-up stage character whom I contrived to take the piss out of the commercial and academic music industries because they are extreme and out of touch with grassroots music making and totally at odds with one another. I want you to understand that the way I behave in everyday life is a far cry from the comedy nemesis of Ariel whose actions were developed from the worst of my experience of humanity. 
As someone who's immersed herself in the world of Amy for weeks now, I feel like I understand what she was trying to do and say. She wanted to bring attention to the absurdities that commercial music has turned into in a way that was viewed as rebellious but funny. Unfortunately, it just came off as a short-tempered firecracker with crazy hair. <laughs> Some people say she knew what she was signing up for, but that's only true to an extent. It's easy to understand now in 2024 how something can exist forever on the internet. But back then we didn't think like that. When you picture the worst case scenario of signing up for a show like this, it would be like, I might embarrass myself, I'd look dumb for a second, uh, but I've got thick skin and my loved ones will still be here. Everyone will forget in a year and it'll be fine. You don't expect 20 years down the road to still be dealing with assholes. Hell, I thought I knew how much hate they dealt with, but until I started my Where Are They Now series, I had no idea that it was as bad as it was. The vile things that are said to them are things that most of us couldn't even come up with in the darkest, most demented corners of our minds. Like, it's worse than that. And because these auditions go viral over and over again, it never stops. In some cases, the comments get worse because the contestants get older. Some can contestants have babies or they get normal jobs or heaven forbid they gain weight like they can't age at all because then you're always comparing them to the person that they were 15 years ago so as as time goes on comments get meaner and just more about their appearance and that's never okay for anyone to live through forever so no they did not know what they were signing up for stop saying that that would be difficult for even the most sane and well-grounded person. So imagine how hard that is for someone with multiple mental disorders. Amy suffered from several, and of course I couldn't know which ones for sure without seeing her medical documents. I can infer from what I've learned that it included depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Along with some physical ailments as well, because she described having unexplained pain and not being able to walk sometimes. It, she's photographed in a wheelchair. There isn't a lot known about her life before the audition and even after. It didn't seem like she had much family in her life, but she did have some friends that she regarded as family. Her brother did handle her funeral arrangements, so clearly there was some kind of relationship there. Although not a lot is known about their childhood, the little glimpses that we do get paint a rather dysfunctional picture. Like this post from Amy, I've had the most extraordinary nightmare. I dreamed that I was in a very strange, odd house. My consultant was there. She told me that I had a new doctor who was an ugly old man and that I had to have new medication, the name of which I didn't recognize. It came in a purple Thai silk box with gold on it. She injected me with it and then I was dancing with the ugly man. My mother, who has a history of abusing me, was there. The drug made me go berserk and then I awoke as my mother was pinning me down and grinding pills into my teeth like she used to do to the cat. It's all- wait, wait, you awoke to your mother grinding pills into your teeth? That wasn't a part of the dream. Her mom was actually shoving pills into her mouth. Oh my god. I'm surrounded by my mother's schizophrenia and psychopathy as she was in the house today. I feel awful. I daren't go back to bed. The generalized stress of tribunals in the mental system, trying to get my care changed and my PTSD recognized instead of being forced to take medication due to lies my mom has told about me is really wearing on me. I feel so broken down and like I can't take any more and I have to see my lawyer in less than 12 hours. Just exhausted mentally, spiritually, and emotionally and so sad for losing my partner. I really need a hug. This tells me a few things. It tells me that her mental struggles are likely hereditary, passed down through her family. And being the child of someone with schizophrenia and psychopathy was likely very turbulent and may have come with some abuse and mistreatment that created some PTSD which she felt at the time was being masked by medications rather than properly addressed. She must have gone through quite a journey with different medical professionals and trying to find the right balance of medications. I I don't I don't think she ever did, honestly. She even had a couple of run-ins with the police, which sparked a bit of a conspiracy theory because she was accused of harming one and she made a video and posted it to her YouTube trying to explain why she's innocent. And it was the last video that she even posted on her YouTube. 
I want to prove to you that I cannot have punched PC Sarah and bruised him to the point where he was black and blue within an hour. She must have made a comment on her now deleted second Facebook page um, that said that the officer wanted her dead and then she dies. The manner in which she did it was one of the more shocking parts of this because she didn't cut, she stabbed. And the reports say that it wasn't entirely clear what she was trying to do. That tells me there probably wasn't a suicide note left. Pretty easy to see how the conspiracy um, thing began. But in my unprofessional opinion, she was struggling tremendously with feeling depressed and lonely leading up to her passing. I think it either became too much for her to bear and she wanted to end her suffering, or she had a psychotic break and delusions caused her to do what she did. Although her mental struggles are an important part of the conversation that we're trying to have, I'd like to shift the focus because Amy was so much more than that and we focused on that part long enough. She was a talented, eccentric, passionate, and fun-loving person who just wanted to make people laugh. She actually had an impressive vocal range, and many people say that, and she could play the guitar and the piano, probably other things too. She was described by her friends as fiercely independent, wanted to be in control, had strong spiritual beliefs, and was a skillful singer and songwriter. She had more of an unconventional taste in music, which is why a lot of people probably wouldn't like it and it explains the song that she sang at her audition. She kind of mixes this like feral heavy vocal with a jazzy folk type melody. She has an impressive music background. She began writing and performing her songs at eight years old. In high school, she began teaching others who would go on to form these metal and punk rock bands until she eventually broke off and flew solo and curated her own style that became even farther from the stereotypes. She focused more on the storytelling aspect and loved musical theater. I even found an old post that indicates that she attended the London College of Music. Let's throw out the bitter woman image that X Factor has created for Amy and replace it with the fun and talented person that she actually was. Back to the question that we asked ourselves at the beginning of this video, is X Factor responsible for Amy's passing? And in my opinion, yes. They bear some responsibility, not solely. The whole situation is a big pizza and X Factor is a slice of it horrible analogy, I'm sorry. But um, but there's a lot, there's many factors and X Factor is one of them. They're the reason that she couldn't show her face for the longest time in public. They're the reason that she got so much verbal abuse and harassment online. They're the reason that anytime she put out something creatively, it was heavily ridiculed and judged. I'm not saying that without the X Factor that her musical creations would have went anywhere. But I am saying that it brought on a lot of negativity and hateful energy that likely fueled and made her mental status even worse. It needs to be exposed so that these TV shows can learn something. Simply us talking about the wrongdoings are gonna help because the contestants are getting their stories out there and sharing their side of what actually happened and it, and it, it gives us a different perspective. That's all I have for you today. Please like and comment. I won't tell you to subscribe because I already did that at the beginning of the video. So I won't tell you to subscribe again. Bye.